Hi Paul, this is Jay, hope you're okay today. Just having a Bible study tonight, I uh, hope everybody's okay. And I've got a friend Mark with me, and we're just going to do a Bible study, so just hope you find it a blessing. And So let's come before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day, and we give you the praise, and we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. And Father, we pray that you be with us now. Father, what we share, may it build your people up may it be an encouragement to us all so father I ask for your blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory Amen mm -hmm. so we're looking at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1 if you get your Bibles out and uh, so I'm reading at 1 Samuel chapter 1 it says there was a certain man of Ramah Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jehoram, the son of Elu, the son of Tu, the son of Zoph, and Ephrite. He had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from the city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Pina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord. She used to provoke her, therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Anna, why do you weep, and why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk, uh, and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. And she was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction, of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant but will give you but will give uh, to your servant a son then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head and as she continued praying before the Lord Eli observed her mouth and Anna was speaking in her heart only her lips moved and her voice was not heard therefore Eli took her to be a drunken woman and Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Anna answered, No, more, no my lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant of, as a worthless woman. For all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant you your petition that you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to the house of Ramah, and Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. Um, so this is about a, a, a prayer uh, of Hannah in a very difficult situation and um, he says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 it says um, <coughs> And it will be given to you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Matthew 7, 7. And for Hannah, uh, she'd been a person who'd been praying and, and knocking and knocking and knocking, and yet it just didn't seem to be happening for her, uh, which we'll be looking at further, uh, further in the Bible study. But she was asking and asking, but there was nothing happening. And a friend, uh, uh, the other wife of Elkanah, 
uh, had children and she didn't have children and to have no child in those days was a humiliating thing and um, but we commanded to pray and God will bless us if we pray in Colossians chapter 4 verse 2 it says devote yourselves to prayer being watchful and thankful and our prayers they extend to heaven regardless of what we think God, hear, God always hears our prayer and um, that's what we're going to look at in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 12 it says the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers 1 Peter 3 12 the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers so Ooh. we've got four points but do you want to say anything Mark? yeah I think um, I like that scripture where it talks about ask seek and, and knock you know, keep asking keep seeking keep knocking and um, it talks about in Hebrews about coming to the throne of grace boldly. Mm, mm. So when we pray, it's good to know that God hears us. Mm. God wants us to come with faith, you know, believing that we're going to receive from Him. Mm, mm. And um, yeah, so faith is an important element. You know, pray, praying with faith. Come with faith and ex an expectancy. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. First point: God hears the broken-hearted. Um. Sometimes when we're hurt, we can feel weak and we can be struggling, and this can go on for a long, long time. Perhaps if we've had a bereavement or whatever uh, situation, but that pain can go on for a long, long time and we can struggle and in chapter 1 verse 10 it says in bitterness of soul Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord that was in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 10 she was in bitterness of soul but she'd been like this for years she'd struggled for years and Hannah's husband saw the tears but he couldn't solve those tears. He couldn't deal with those tears. He couldn't deal with the brokenness of our heart. Mm. And in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 8, it says, He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. And she was in the dust because in those days, if you didn't have a child in your marriage, you were seen as a nobody and nothing as a woman. So for her not to bear a child, it was the utter, it was the quintessential, absolute degradation of her. It made her look just a waste of space. And she was a nothing because of that, because she wasn't bearing a child. And in 1 Samuel 12, 8, he raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. Ooh. You know, in Psalm 138, verse 6, he looks upon the lowly and yeah. so however we're feeling today however broken we might feel whatever however low uh, uh, whatever low ebb we are at at this time whatever that may be God lifts such people up he doesn't allow such people that are his people to be just pushed aside and to be forgotten He's with the underdog. He's with the broken. He's with those who have no strength anymore, who have no strength to even cry. I mean, Hannah had been crying so much over the years, she didn't have any strength to, to go on anymore. She just couldn't, she was just silently sobbing. Yeah. And yet God was hearing those cries. Mm. Those cries were where um, he'd taken those tears and they were in his bottle and he had remembered them. Any mm. thoughts, bro? 
Yeah, I'm just thinking of that verse, verse 11, where she says, Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, mm. if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservants and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. I was just noticing that she was pacific with God about what she wanted. Yeah, yeah. She not only wanted a child, she wanted a male one. Oh, right. I think when it comes to prayer, God likes it when we're specific with him. Mm, mm. Um, sometimes we're frightened to be pacific because we think, oh, well, I just... Uh, I'll have any answer. We're just, we're just so desperate and broken. We want God to answer in any way. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a crumb will do, Lord. <laughs> just give me your crumb. <laughs> but what faith is that I'm coming boldly to the throne of grace? You know, it's scary sometimes, but with faith, praise specifically. So pray specifically for whatever you want. Bring it to God. Boldly, um, sometimes our prayers are vague. Sometimes we don't know what to pray. Yeah. Sometimes we don't have the wisdom what to pray. You know, but um, most things we can be specific with God. Mm. And uh, faith is specific with God. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you a story. You know, I don't know if I've, I've shared this with you, but. Um, when Claire was pregnant with Jude, yeah. this was years back, we were both getting the bus to work and we didn't have money for a car. So we um, we prayed to God for a car, so we need a car load. Um, a guy in church knew we, we didn't have a car and we wanted one and he said to us, I'm going to get a new car now, I want to give you, I want to give you my old one. You know, so we were really excited, and he, he said, oh, I've come round and drop it off. Wow. So we were excited about this. We were rejoicing and thanking God for this car. And the day before he came round, Claire was making a shopping list, my wife, Claire. Yeah. And she wrote some specific things that we needed, and she wrote down trifle balls, a mirror, and a sieve. <laughs> I don't know why she wanted those things, but that's the, what she wanted. Anyway, he... he um, he came to the house and we signed the papers over. And um, before he went, he said, oh, there's some things in the boot there if you want them. You know, there's just <laughs> some things left behind. And we went, oh, yeah, thank you. Thanks, John, we'll do that. We weren't really bothered. We thought, we're not bothered what's in the boot. We've got the car, you know. Yeah. So he left and we were just thanking God in the front room for the bit for this car. And uh, Claire said, oh, we better get the things in out the boots, you know, see, see what's there. Yeah. So we went to the car, we opened the boot, and in the boot was a mirror, a trifle ball, <laughs> some sieves. <laughs> well, I told you that before. But no, that is awesome, man. Oh, wow, that was awesome. I, always, I used to share this with the kid when I was working in the school. But what that tells you is, pe yeah. people, my skept skeptics will say, well, you know, what's, um, why would, why would, it's just a coincidence, why would God, Give you the trifle balls mirror in the sieve. Yeah. You know, but the, what it tells you is this is, is God cares about the little things. Yeah, yeah. God provides. And you see, what's important to us is important to God. Yeah. And it was God saying, look, I mean, every detail of your life, from providing a car to the little things on your shopping list. Wow. You that know, is amazing, man. Sometimes some people say, you know, you don't want to get too extreme. I mean, you, you you don't pray to God what socks to put on, do you? Or what shoes? Yeah. And what the, that's just a way of mocking God, really. It's a way of saying you can't rely on God for any for, for everything. I mean, you know, it's a lie from Satan because, you know, we can rely on God for anything. I'm not saying we pray to ask what socks or shoes to put on. Yeah. But any statement that undermines, any statement that's made, that undermines God's provision in your life, yeah, and God's care. Don't you know? You don't listen to it. So, 
That's brilliant. But I, I just thought I'd share that about prayer. That's awesome, man. <clears throat> Second point, God takes a long time to answer prayer. Um, if you look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 7, it says, This went on year after year, whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. So this went on for year after year. So have we prayed for something or been praying for things that have just not seemed to be answered and we're praying, we've been praying year after year? Um, and we kind of can feel disappointed. It's kind of like uh, when uh, in the Second World War when Warsaw was surrounded by uh, German troops and you know the Polish were trapped in Warsaw and they were waiting for the Allies to come and they never came and sometimes we can feel like that we can feel beleaguered and surrounded and we've been praying all the time for this one specific or some specific things and yet it just doesn't seem to be happening for us um, but Hannah kept going kept praying she kept in there and sometimes waiting isn't easy sometimes waiting can be a long time sometimes waiting can be painful um, but God knows the right time um, so when we pray let's believe that if we have to wait that God knows the right time to, to answer that prayer. So um, if we turn to Mark chapter 11, verse 24. So, do you want, would you read it, Mark? Yeah. Mark 11, 24. Really there. Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. You there, Jay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So any thoughts, mate? Yeah, I, do you know, I, I think that verse is connected to the next verse because it goes on to talk about forgiveness. Uh, so I'll just expand a bit. It says, therefore I ask to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. And if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Just talk about receiving from God, Jay, in prayer. Sometimes there's blockages from receiving from God. And this text here, in the relation to asking and receiving, after that talks about the need to forgive. So unforgiveness can be a blockage. Yeah, yeah. To stop you receiving from God. Yeah. And I think a lot of people read this and they miss that next bit. Because I think it's I think it's meant to be together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I'm just thinking what, what sometimes there is we don't sometimes we don't receive from God in prayer because of certain blockages and the number one blockage for many is unforgiveness. Yeah, yeah. And you know, forgiveness is hard because the cross was hard. Yeah, yeah. And it, we need we need God's help to forgive. I I I I sorry. Go on, mate. No, I go on, Jay. I. Yeah, no, I, I had a daily reading today and I read something about church and are you part of the church and whatever you're not. And I just felt like uh, a surge of inner anger that I didn't know I had. You know, and I, and I, I didn't realise there were certain people in the past from church life that I needed to forgive. That I didn't realise I needed to forgive. You know, and... Uh, and like now, I feel a much more freedom spiritually because that was been dealt with. But I didn't know. Yeah. It, I didn't really understand it was there. 
until I read a scripture and then it just brought it up. Yeah. Well, sometimes you you can forgive people, and in six months' time, they come back up again the same people. Yeah, yeah. And I remember it was, um, I think it was uh, Dr. McCulloch, you know. I think it was him on a book. He talked about forgiveness being like an onion. And with onion, there's like different layers of skin, isn't there? Yeah. With an onion. And yeah. he talked about forgiveness being like that, you know, you peel one layer. Yeah. And then sometimes there's other layers. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to peel, you've got to forgive it a few times until you get to the core. Yeah, yeah. And um, But, yeah, like you say, you know, sometimes it's like um, what you what you mentioned yeah. before one of this passage, you talked about waiting on God. Sometimes you're waiting a long time. And um, in one of the Psalms talks about feeding on God's faithfulness. Yeah, yeah. Which is in that season of wait, what do we do? We feed on God. We remember God's character. We yeah. remember God's faithfulness. God is faithful. Yeah. God will come through. Yeah. God will answer. And in those times, that time of waiting, it might be long, you feed on the faithfulness of God. You remember that God's faithful. Mm. And um, God's going to come through. So just just an aside, what what do you make of it when it says when the Lord says, you know, pray and I will answer and then in John fourteen thir verse thirteen and fourteen he says, I will do whatever you ask in my name and then in James five sixteen it says the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And he seems to be teaching that whatever you pray he will answer. He, he he will do it. How how do you what what do you think of those verses that seem to imply that that when you pray, you know, it says like, "I will do whatever you ask in my name." John fourteen thirteen fourteen. How do you understand yeah. those verses? Do you know what? I've thought about that. You know, because I realised a few years back, Jay. You, you see, you, you can have you can have more faith sometimes than wisdom, and sometimes I know it sounds a bit odd, <laughs> yeah. but sometimes you can you can think you want certain things or you need certain things and you don't. Yeah. You know, and um, sometimes I, I say to Claire, you know, I'm not sure what I want. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I'm not mixed up sometimes. I don't know. You need you need the wisdom. To, I think you need wisdom to pray the right thing. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. Because I think sometimes people, if they don't have wisdom, you're you're going to be praying for the wrong things. And um, it's like there's a frightening scripture, you know, mm. in Exodus, where the Israelites are more than that. They're eating, you know, they're eating that manna stuff every day. Yeah. You know, and they talk about oh, we wish we were in. Back in Egypt, where there was garlic and yeah, you know there yeah. was uh, onions and stuff, and they start mourning for quail for meat. Yeah. And God says, "Oh, if you want meat, have meat." And He sends a load of quail. I, I don't remember the rest of the story. What we end up getting stuffed with quail and that da all dying. Yeah, yeah. So God gives them what they ask for. He says, "Oh, you want quail? There you go." You know. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, I don't think they knew really what because because they were praying out of selfishness and rebellion. Yeah, yeah. It's dangerous to do that because you know God might just give you. You're yeah, gonna yeah. complain. God will say, "There you go. Then learn your lesson." <laughs> yeah. Well, well but, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm just I just think wisdom needs to come into it. Yeah. I think your heart needs to be pure. Um. That, yeah. that's really helpful mate it's helped me anyway third point waiting for answer prayer can be painful verse 13 Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving but her voice was not heard Eli thought she was 
drunk. Eli thought she was drunk. And basically, basically Eli the priest was judging Hannah when Hannah was in, in prayer. He thought she was just like bladdered. Yeah. And, um, you know, often like Christians and people can judge us. Uh, there's a story of a lady in Canada that I know. Uh, she started to go and visit people in the church. It was a Chinese church, and she was Chinese, and she went. It started a ministry where <clears throat> she went visiting people house to house in pastoral yeah. care. And um, basically, uh, people began to judge her and say she was doing it for her own glory. She she'd started this ministry for her own glory. When she hadn't, she'd just done it for other people. Yeah. But the point is, is that we can be praying for something and it's really heart-wrenching for us. It's really deep. It's really important to us. And as we're praying, other people can be judging us um, and getting the wrong end of the stick of what we're about. And uh, yeah. just to be mindful of that and not to be discouraged by it that Hannah had gone through that and um, so we're not the only people that have gone through that feeling or situation um, yeah. and she came through it and I was thinking maybe you know the Lord I mean when he was in the garden of Gethsemane I mean there the Lord is in prayer and his disciples fell asleep yeah so prayer when we're waiting for the answer can be sometimes painful. Yeah. Any thoughts? No, I, I agree, Jeff. I agree. Um, I think it's a good question to ask, what is prayer? Because I think prayer is more than just asking God for things. Yeah. I think the, the, the priority of prayer Christian prayer is to develop our relationship with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the priority of what prayer is. You know, a prayer is, uh, it's not a monologue. It, it's, a, it's a dialogue. Yeah, yeah. In other words, there's, there's an ongoing communication between you and God. When we pray, we can expect God to to speak back. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think it's, it's got, prayer's got a lot of functions, but the primary one is, it's how we develop our relationships. All good relationships are developed by good communication yeah it's the same thing with God that's amazing so, so that's the your first priority of prayer and obviously we pray to ask ask for things we, we pray to uh, praise God yeah so I think the key yeah I, I think like you mentioned about waiting and it being painful in those times, I think what you see, God's heart, I believe, brother, in prayer, yeah, is to develop a relationship with us, develop intimacy with us. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we might could be asking for things, and God wants to give us it. Yeah. We're saying, hang on, what I really want is this intimate relationship with you. Yeah, yeah. I want, I want to be, I want. Um, we've, we've, we've got to seek. The uh, the blesser, not the blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to see God. But, uh, that's yeah. that's brilliant, mate. Um, fourth point, Hannah. That's it. This is back to what you said before. Hannah was specific in her prayer, and believed God was in control. Uh, verse twenty. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son and like you mentioned it was a, a boy um, I remember like when I was at when I did um, at Leeds City Mission I did a couple of weeks uh, you know like when we had break at seminary and stuff we had we went off and did and um, they were doom and gloom saying that there's no point in going out doing door-to-door -door evangelism and they got yeah. this program where they'd set themselves that they were doing they were going to do door-to-door -door on an estate 
and they'd given themselves this task but they didn't have any faith, they didn't believe nothing had happened. They were talking about, well, you know, nobody's going to be interested or anything like that. So I, I said, uh, well, let's pray that when we go out today, we'll, we'll meet people and, you know, let's pray some specific prayer. So I said, Lord, may we have some really good conversations today. And yeah. this is the leader of the mission and the missionaries there, and they were all, like, really negative. And I said, well, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. We went out and we did have some good conversations, but the point is that they weren't praying for anything specific, so they weren't getting anywhere. Um, and verse 27 of 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, I prayed for the child and the Lord has granted me what I asked for him. Yeah. And she prayed specifically like you said. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and um, you know, God is in control, and you know, whatever, you know, whatever situation we're in, you know, things can things can break down. Uh, the car can break down. The you know, things can just spin out of control, and we wonder what's happening. But God is in control, mm. and. Um, when we pray in those situations, he he's over those times when we feel things are out of control. You know, for yeah. Hannah, things were out of control for her. I mean, she she was getting backlash from this other wife, and um, she was getting judged by Eli, uh, and things just seemed out of control. But God had it all in hand. He was in control, and you know, he hears our prayers. Yeah. So specific prayer, like you say, and uh, God is in control. So any thoughts, mate? Yeah. Um. I think it is. I'm trying to remember what I was going to say, but it's, it's there. Um. God's sovereignty. Specific. It'll come to me, Jeff. All right, if you get your thoughts, just let me know and then just right. jump in. And then yeah. final, final one, uh, God answers prayer wonderfully. Verse 27, 1 Samuel 27, I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted what I asked for. Um, and just basically, uh, Thomas Watson says, uh, Does God give us a Christ and will he deny us a crust? <laughs> you know? I like that. <laughs> if God, says Thomas Watson, does not give us what we crave, he will give us what we need. Yeah. Does God give us a Christ and will he deny us a crust? If God does not give us what we crave, he will give us what we need. So expect great things from God. Yeah. He wants to bless you. So believe that he wants to bless you. Yeah. You know, in James 5.16, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Yeah. You know, Hannah had waited a long time it had been painful. But when she got the blessing, when she got the blessing, she got a blessing. And when she got that child, Samuel, it was not just for her. She used it for the glory of God. She dedicated Samuel to the temple. And when she got that blessing, it was a wonderful blessing. But she'd learned that ultimately this is for the glory of God. Yeah. And we go through the pain and we go through the tragedy and the difficulty and we pray but when that blessing comes it's going to be a great blessing and when it comes yeah. then we give it back to God and say thank you God, glory be to you it's glory, glory, glory you be honoured yeah. so it's not a case of if the blessing comes mm. it's w the blessing will come yeah Amen, brother. And when it comes, 
It's going to be a glorious blessing. Preach it. <laughs> and, when it and when it comes, it's going to be a glorious blessing. And then when it does, we give it back to God. Yeah. Someone said this about John Knox. I think it was Mary, Queen of Scots. I fear John Knox prayers more than an army of 10,000 men. <laughs> Mary, Queen of Scots, I fear John Knox prayers more than an army of 10,000 men. Yeah. So the answer to our situation is stop thinking of small views of God. Stop wrapped up in our tears. We're too wrapped up in our tears. We're too wrapped up in our brokenness. We're too wrapped up in our circumstances. And we need to mount the scale of heaven. We need to go into the presence of the living God. We need to see his greatness and majesty and might. And we need to lay hold on him and pray down the blessing and expect yeah. it to come. And if we have to walk on nails, if we have to walk on glass with no socks and the pain is hard, we still know that blessing is coming and it's going to be wonderful blessing and we give glory to God because he's a yeah. great and mighty God and the blessing Amen. is going to flow. Oh, sorry, I had to preach a little bit. There. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I fear yeah. John Knox prayers more than an army of 10,000 men. Mary, Queen of Scots. That's brilliant, that, Jay. That's excellent. Yeah, I think we've, we've got to pray in faith. Our prayers have got to be based in our faith and not our feelings sometimes. Mm. You know, there's a time to cry. But we've got to pray according to the word. Yeah, yeah. What that means is sometimes yeah, you'll get Christians that pray things like, Oh Lord, please be with me. Right? Yeah. The, the word clearly tells us God will never leave us or forsake us, and God is with us. <laughs> yeah. So the prayer, the prayer shouldn't be, Lord, please be with me. Yeah. The prayer should be, Lord, thank you, your word says that you're with me. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a prayer of faith based on the word of God. Yeah. The other one's a, a prayer based on your feelings or emotions. Yeah, yeah. You know, and... Wow, that's great. I know this is a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit far out, but some of the faith preachers, you know, Gloria Colton was talking about uh, some problems she had, yeah, based on the circumstances. Yeah, she started, she started praying faith. She started praying faith over, you know, and 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 not and, and saying to herself, "I'm not considering the circumstances." And someone said to her. Well, isn't that dealing with reality? Isn't that not dealing with reality? Mm. And she says, oh, no, she says, your problems are real. And she says, your circumstances are real. But she says, all circumstances and problems are subject to change. Mm. So it's not denying that they're not real, but it's having faith that God is going to, change those circumstances. Mm. No. The prayer of faith is speaking the end result. Mm. Like when Abraham it says he, he called things that weren't as though they were. It says he didn't consider his body that yeah. he was past dead. Yeah, yeah. But he, he didn't waver in unbelief, but you know, he didn't consider his circumstances, he didn't consider his body. He considered the word of God. He stood on the word of God. Mm. That's how faith it says in Romans, faith comes, right? Faith, there's, there's a key straight away. Faith comes. We know faith comes. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Yeah. It comes by the word of God. It, it doesn't come. <clears throat> it doesn't come through... Um, It doesn't come through our own ideas. Mm. 
it comes through the word of God. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, you know, the Psalm 23 is awesome. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's a prayer of faith. Mm. Lord, your word says, I shall not want because you're my shepherd. Thank Amen. you that you're going to provide all my needs according to the riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's the prayer of faith. You know, Lord, Lord, guide me. Mm. You know, that's an emotional prayer. It's thank you, God. Your word says that you are going to guide me. I'm receiving your guidance in Jesus' name. Mm. You know, so that's how I try and pray. And you can't always. But yeah, yeah. I think the key is our prayers need to be based on the word of God. Don't pray things where you already know the answer in the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to pray for God to be with us. He is with us. He said he's with us. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, will you forgive me, Lord? Will you forgive me? The word says clearly if we confess our sins, yeah, he's ready to, to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And um, that's where the confession comes in as well. The confession, the confession of faith, confessing God's word over our over our lives, God's promises. Yeah. So we, we could we can come bold at the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. it says. John Newton wrote, Thou art come into a king, large petitions with thee bring, for his grace and power as such, none can ever ask too much. John Newton. Mm. I'll just read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth beside the still waters. And he restoreth my soul, and he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I just want to say to anybody out there today, if you feel that you're broken, if you feel that you're broken to bits today and you've been praying and you just feel that there's no hope, just think of Hannah. God answered her prayer and God lifted her out of the pit. And God will lift you out of the pit. He's going to bring blessing to you even though you can't see it at the moment. But as Mark said, walk with the word of God, pray with the word of God, have faith, and develop your relationship with God. Feed on his faithfulness, as Mark has said. And God will raise you up in due time. Ooh. Okay, Mark, we're going to close. So do you want to close in prayer, mate? Yeah. I'm going to pray for the people out there. Father God, thank you that you're faithful to answer, Lord. You're faithful to give. Lord God, we want to be receivers, Lord. Help us to have receiving hearts, Lord. Lord, I just pray for people who listen to this, Lord, that are in a place where they feel lost or lonely. They feel alone, Father. God, I pray a way out for them, Lord. I pray a breakthrough for them, God. I pray that whatever need they have, they will bring to you, Lord, and you will provide for them, God. <coughs> Lord, I pray if there's anyone sick, I pray healing over them in Jesus' name. I pray they'll be healed completely, Lord. 
Lord, if people have your depression, I pray for your joy to fill them. I pray your peace, Father, where there's fear. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to you, God, boldly, mm. with faith, God. So I just, we, we bring these people before you this night, God. We bring ourselves. And we thank you in advance, Lord. We, mm. we thank you for what we're going to receive, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, folks, we're going to turn off the Google Hangout. We're not going to turn off uh, Skype, Mike, but I'll, uh, Mark, but I'll just turn off uh, Google Hangout. So, folks, thanks for coming. Uh, we're going to call it a day now uh, on the Google Hangout. And I uh, hope you've been blessed by this. Uh, feel free to mirror this video if you want to use it to encourage people. And uh, God bless you. Have a lovely day tomorrow, and may God be with you. God bless. This is Jason and Mark uh, saying goodbye. God bless. <laughs>